new iPhone. Who does? Right. Well, not exactly, but you get what I mean. Yeah. iPhone season is here. And based on the mountain of articles you've sent, it seems like you want to know what's what with this iPhone 16 Pro. Yeah. And this time it feels different. It's not just the yearly Apple hype machine. There's actually some substance to this Pro label they're pushing. Oh, for sure. Bigger screen, battery life that sounds almost too good to be true, yeah. a camera button that's got everyone talking. But before we get lost in the weeds, let's be real. You want to know if this phone is going to change your life, right? And to figure that out, we got to go beyond just listing specs. We need to understand what those features mean for you day in and day out. Now you're speaking my language. Yeah. So let's start with that display. One article mentioned both the Pro and Pro Max got bigger, the Pro ending up at a decent 6.3 inches. Which, considering they've trimmed down those bezels, makes a difference. You get more screen in a body that's not that much bigger. Plus, they bumped up the resolution, although whether that'll be noticeable during your average Netflix binge, well, yeah. that's debatable. Listen, I'll take any excuse for a more immersive viewing experience, but while we're on the topic of making phone usage last longer, that battery life, 27 hours of video playback. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, so two things there. Apple says they managed to fit a physically larger battery thanks to some clever engineering inside. Plus, the new A18 chip is supposed to be incredibly power efficient. But remember, these are lab conditions they're testing in. There's always a catch. But hey, if it gets me through a day of doom scrolling without needing a recharge, I'm sold. Now, for something a little more controversial, that new camera control button. Some say it's genius, others, not so much. What's your take? It's definitely different. Imagine a touch-sensitive button right on the side, and you can customize it. A tap to launch the camera app, done. Zoom in and out, no problem. The idea is to make taking pictures faster and more intuitive. And does it? <laughs> That's the million-dollar question, right? Some users love the tactile control and speed, saying it's like having a dedicated shutter button. Others keep bumping it accidentally, finding it too sensitive, or they just miss the on-screen buttons. Sounds like one of those love it or hate it features. <laughs> but hey, got to give Apple props for trying new things, right? Okay. Now, about that camera itself, specs are one thing, but how does it stack up against the competition? Total iPhone domination or a close call? The reviews we have put it head to head with the Samsung Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Google Pixel 9 Pro. And it's less about one phone being the absolute best and more about understanding the strengths of each. So where does our iPhone friend really excel? One area where it consistently blew the others out of the water, macro photography. We're talking insane detail, vibrant colors, those super up-close shots that usually make you wish you had a microscope. You know, I always thought macro photography was only for, like, artsy Instagram folks. Right. But then I tried it on this phone, and now I'm hooked on taking pictures of bugs. It's strangely fascinating. But okay, aside from bug close-ups, what else stood out to you? Low light video was another big one. Even in dim lighting, the footage was super clear and stable, which is something other phones struggled with. The Galaxy S24 Ultra lost detail, and the Pixel 9 Pro, while decent, couldn't match the iPhone's brightness and clarity. So for those nighttime cityscapes, or recording your friend's stand-up routine in a dimly lit bar, which, let's be honest, we've all been there, the iPhone 16 Pro might be your new go-to. But before we crown it the king of pocket cameras, there's one more thing we need to talk about. Apple intelligence. Possibly the most exciting and most uncertain feature of the bunch. Right. This big promise of an AI assistant that anticipates your every need, helps you conquer your to-do list without breaking a sweat, basically makes your phone feel like it's from the future. But is it living up to the hype? That's the question, isn't it? The early reviews are, <laughs> well, I'd call them cautiously optimistic. Cautiously optimistic. Well, so like when your friend starts dating someone new and says, they're nice. Exactly. Tom's guide mentioned that while the new Siri and AI powered writing tools show promise, some of those wow features, like the whole chat GPT integration everyone's buzzing about, well, they're not quite there yet. So revolutionary potential, but Maybe he needs a bit more time to bake. Yeah, more like Apple gave us a sneak peek of the future, but the red carpet isn't rolled out. Like that visual intelligence feature where you point your phone at something and it tells you all about it. Still in development. Okay, so maybe don't trade in your old phone solely for the AI revolution just yet. Yeah. But let's talk about the brains behind all this. The, the A18 chip built on this three nanometer process. I mean, I get it's supposed to be crazy fast, but that's so small it's practically invisible. It is impressively tiny. And those benchmarks are nothing to sneeze at. It outperforms the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 you find in the Galaxy S24 Ultra in many tests, especially when it comes to single-core performance, which is crucial for how snappy your phone feels every day. But 
There's always a but, right? Right. While the A18 excels in general performance and tasks like video editing, the Galaxy S24 Ultra did manage to outperform it in some graphics-heavy benchmarks. So for the average Joe, what does that mean? If I'm editing a 4K video on the fly or trying to dominate in my favorite mobile game, which phone wins? Well, that's where it gets a little tricky. While the benchmarks suggest the S24 Ultra might have a slight edge in raw graphics power, real-world performance depends on other things too, like software optimization and how developers utilize those powerful chips. So, a bit of a toss-up for now, but let's be real. For many people, the deal-breaker or deal-maker is the price. And this is where Apple's strategy gets interesting. They're positioning the iPhone 16 Pro starting at $999 as the more budget-friendly option compared to the Pro Max. Okay, I get having different tiers, but are they pushing their luck a bit with that price tag? A thousand bucks for a phone is no small feat. It's a lot of dough, no doubt. But then again, you are getting a noticeably larger screen battery life that could change the way we think about binge watching and a camera system that's practically begging to upgrade your Instagram feed. Plus, don't forget the whole Apple intelligence angle. It's tempting to write it off because it's not quite there yet. But what we've seen so far suggests it could completely change how we use our phones in the future. True, but that's also what makes it a gamble, right? Yeah. Do you buy now for the current benefits? or wait and see if Apple delivers on those AI promises. It's like trying to predict the stock market. You've got your gut feeling, you've got the current trends, but at the end of the day, no one knows for sure what the future holds. So are you saying there's a chance this iPhone 16 Pro could feel outdated sooner than previous models, especially if those AI advancements really take off? It's a valid concern. Imagine a year from now, apps that analyze your shopping list and suggest recipes based on what's on sale or tools that translate conversations in real time flawlessly. Those who jumped on the iPhone 16 Pro bandwagon early might be having some second thoughts. Okay, that's both exciting and a bit unsettling. Definitely something to think about, especially for those who aren't feeling the pressure to upgrade immediately. Exactly. Now, let's circle back to those battery life claims for a second. 27 hours of video playback sounds incredible on paper. But you were right to point out that real-world use is a different story. Right, because, let's be honest, who's just watching movies on their phone all day? I've got to factor in checking emails, endless scrolling, using GPS to navigate through traffic. Tom's Guide actually did a battery test simulating continuous web browsing at a set brightness level, and the iPhone 16 Pro clocked in at a very respectable 14 hours and 7 minutes. That's considerably longer than the iPhone 15 Pro, and it even beat out the Google Pixel 9 Pro. Okay, now that's impressive. That's a full workday and then some. But what about charging speeds? Apple hasn't exactly been leading the pack in that department. Yeah, no major breakthroughs there, unfortunately. The iPhone 16 Pro still uses a 20W charger, which seems almost outdated compared to those 45W and even faster options we're seeing on other phones. So no charging your phone while you brush your teeth and magically hitting 100%. Not quite. Tom's guide reported 0 to 56% in 30 minutes, which is noticeably slower than both the Galaxy S24 Ultra and the Pixel 9 Pro. Oh, bummer. But hey, at least we've got that amazing battery life. Right? Exactly. Seems like Apple's focusing on endurance over speed when it comes to battery life, at least for this generation. They did, however, make one improvement on the charging front. Oh, do tell. They gave MagSafe wireless charging a bit of a boost. If you're using a compatible 30W adapter, you can now get up to 25W wireless charging, up from 15W. So if you're all about that wireless life, there's a little bonus. Okay, not exactly a revolution, but I'll take it. Speaking of upgrades... We spent a lot of time talking about the shiny new stuff, but what about the core software experience beyond Apple intelligence? iOS 18, give me the highlights. Think of iOS 18 as that perfectly tailored suit. It's not about reinventing the wheel, it's about refining, making things smoother, more personalized, a touch more elegant, perhaps. Sounds like Apple's going for that quiet luxury vibe with their software this time around. Yeah. So are we talking minor tweaks or actual noticeable improvements? One of the biggest changes is the ability to customize your home screen more freely. You can arrange icons to your heart's content, much like Android users have been doing for years. It's the little things, right? But seriously, that's a welcome addition. What else is new in the land of iOS 18? They've revamped Control Center, giving you more control over the shortcuts and tools you access quickly. The Photos app got some love too, with better image recognition for easier searching and the ability to search by topic. Plus, you can tweak the look and feel of the Photos app itself, which is a nice touch. So all in all, iOS 18 seems like a solid update. 
even if it's not as flashy or attention-grabbing as some of their past releases. More like Apple quietly upping their game behind the scenes. Exactly. It's about polishing the user experience, giving you more control, and making those everyday interactions a bit more enjoyable. Which, let's face it, is what a pro phone should do. <laughs> Make your life a little easier, a little more efficient, and maybe even a tad more delightful. Couldn't have said it better myself. And it all comes back to that question we started with. Does the iPhone 16 Pro truly live up to its Pro label? And based on what we've discussed so far, the answer is, well, it's complicated. Complicated, huh? Good, complicated, or pull your hair out complicated. Give it to me straight. Well, think of it this way. The iPhone 16 Pro, it's like that all-star athlete, great stats, looks the part, tons of stamina. But even star athletes have their weaknesses, right? Like, maybe they're not great at passing the ball, or they trip over their own feet sometimes. Exactly. And for the iPhone 16 Pro, those weaknesses are things like the not-so-impressive charging speed, Apple intelligence still finding its feet, and of course, that price tag that's making some people do a double-take. Which brings us to the big question. Upgrade or no upgrade? And it's not exactly a cheap decision either. Nope, no easy answer there. It really comes down to what you need from a phone, what matters most to you, and how much you're willing to spend for the latest and greatest. Like, if you're the kind of person who camps out in front of the Apple store to be the first one with the new phone, mm. then yeah, go for it. This phone's probably calling your name. But for the rest of us, it's worth taking a moment to really think it through. I agree. If you're perfectly content with your current phone, if those extra hours of battery life or slightly better photos aren't making your heart race, then sticking with what you have might be the smarter move, at least for now. Especially with AI still being such a wild card. It's exciting to think about what it could do, but it's also okay to sit back and see how it all plays out. Couldn't agree more. Being informed, understanding what you gain and what you compromise on, making choices that work for your own personal tech style, that's what being a pro is really about. Well said. So listeners, here's your homework. Think about how you actually use your phone. What drives you crazy? What features do you wish you had? Then see how that lines up with what the iPhone 16 Pro offers. Are these small incremental changes that are nice, sure, but not worth a big chunk of change? Or are they game changers that will actually make a real difference in your daily life? Only you can answer that. And here's a final thought, something to chew on. We've talked a lot about specs and benchmarks and all those details, but let's be real, tech moves fast. The real question isn't whether the iPhone 16 Pro is good. It's whether it's good enough to stay relevant, to hold its value in a world that's changing faster than ever. AI, VR, who knows what else is coming next year, the year after. That's the big question, right? And it applies to more than just our phones. It's about all the technology we bring into our lives. A lot to ponder. On that note, we'll leave you to contemplate the future of smartphones, AI, and everything in between. Until next time. Happy diving.